Frank Ocean is a legend in the music industry. He's written for Beyonce, he's gone platinum multiple times, and he actually became the second Grammy Award winning artist to get beaten up by Chris Brown. Now everybody knows a bit of Frank Ocean, whether it's a song from his original mixtape Nostalgia Ultra, his debut album Channel Orange, or his legendary independent follow-up Blonde. But the less attentive and iPhone-hating listeners amongst us may have missed out on Frank Ocean's Apple-exclusive visual album Endless. This dropped as an Apple Music exclusive along with a bizarre 45-minute visual of Frank Ocean building a staircase. Well, if you didn't catch Endless, it's likely that you didn't catch the amazing story behind it, where Frank Ocean has been reported to have pulled off a $20 million finesse that left the head of Universal Music Group fuming. It was ASAP Rocky that brought this story to the mainstream's attention with a 2018 interview with Angie Martinez. That man figured out how to finesse the record industry, and people don't talk about that. That it took that man two years to do that shit, and then blonde he already got a 20 million dollar check from apple from that shit which he didn't have to put give any of that shit back to to the label because he was already out his deal once he gave them endless but the real story starts in 2009. frank was living in la and pursuing his music career when he met and joined the hip-hop collective odd future wolfgang kill them all it was joining Odd Future that introduced him to the hip-hop community and brought us a bunch of classic songs with him and the Odd Future gang. There's Analog 2, which is a beautiful duet with Tyler the Creator and also a ballad for making plans with indecisive women. There's the song Widow, where seemingly at the end Frank gets lost in the vocal booth and can't find his way out. Where I'm at, now where we at, where we at. And of course, She, where Frank discusses the troubles of going through his first period. Later on in 2009, Frank met legendary music producer Tricky Stewart. Tricky is a music industry hit maker who's been responsible for some of the most successful and obnoxious songs of all time. Beyonce's single Ladies, Rihanna's Umbrella, and of course, the classic Justin Bieber, Baby. Through working with Tricky, Frank was able to secure writing credits on songs with legendary artists such as Brandy, John Legend, and Beyonce, aka Jay-Z's bloody wife. It was around this time that Frank actually signed a deal with Def Jam, a deal that would later prove itself to be as tricky as the guy that got him into it. Frank later said that he felt neglected by Def Jam, that he didn't have a relationship with the label, and he basically felt like he'd just been signed and stored away. Tricky later said in an interview that in hindsight, the deal was a huge mistake, and he just couldn't get Def Jam to get behind Frank the way that Tricky was. It was in 2011 that Frank made the first in a long line of major finesses against his record label. After being inspired by Odd Future and their own genius approach, Approach at putting out their own mixtape and building a buzz completely independently, he decided to put together a little mixtape of his own. So at the start of 2011, Frank independently pushed out Nostalgia Ultra, which became a smash underground hit without any promotion. Suddenly, Def Jam are all interested in Mr. Ocean, so they decide to get behind the mixtape and release two of the songs as singles. Novocaine, which ends up charting at 82, and Swim Good, which ends up hitting number 70. It's at this point that Frank Ocean is contacted by everybody's favorite elevator punching bag, Jay-Z, and disgraced Maybach repairman, Kanye West. Def Jam were toying around with the idea of packaging up Frank's mixtape Nostalgia Ultra as a commercial release, but this was eventually abandoned due to the fact it was littered with unclearable samples. Now Def Jam are convinced of Frank Ocean's ability, let the finessing begin. So Frank immediately demands a million dollars and complete creative control over his debut album, which he gets. He wrote all the songs in three weeks and came with that heat. So in 2012, he drops his debut album, Channel Orange, and it's an absolute smash hit. It's got the hit songs Thinking About You and Pyramids and debuts at number two on the Billboard charts, later going on to win a Grammy. It was then next year in February 2013 that Frank announced that he was working on his next album. But no music dropped until a year later when Frank Ocean released the song Hero as part of a series of songs sponsored by the shoe brand Converse. Then once again, silence. We don't hear anything from Frank right up until the end of the year, until about November, when he releases a snippet from the album which still doesn't have a title called Memorize. More months go by, and it's only in April 2015 that Frank comes out and says that there's gonna be two versions of his album and a magazine that's gonna go along with it. It's in February 2016 that Frank pops up on Kanye West's legendary Life of Pablo album on the song Waltz, which is then unusually re-edited after it comes out to remove Frank's segment from the song. Frank's part is then separated into its own song, which features the very creative title, Frank's Track. Well done on that, Kanye. A few months later, in July 2016, Frank hints at the album coming out soon with a very cryptic video posted on his website. The 1st of August 2016, this is when everything goes down. 
At 3 a.m. an unusual and endless stream of Frank Ocean woodworking in a warehouse in Brooklyn appears on his website with an Apple Music logo and some unusual instrumentation being played sporadically throughout. Turns out these instruments would then form into instrumentals from the Endless album and that this stream would end up lasting 140 hours. As the live stream went on, it became very clear that what Frank was actually doing was building a staircase. I can only hope that he built it to have more traction than Meek Mill's staircase. As it got closer to completion, the stream was accompanied by the actual songs from the Endless album and eventually an Apple Music link where you could listen to the album. So the 45 minute version of the visual album is still actually very hard to find if you're not an Apple Music user. I looked for it for ages and genuinely the only place I could find it was Pornhub. Frank later came out and said that the endless visual album actually represented the final move in a seven year chess game he'd been playing with Def Jam Records to get out of his contract. Throughout this time, he had to replace several members of his team, including his lawyers and his management, as well as paying back a $2 million advance to Def Jam, which he'd been given to record that second album. By doing this, he was actually able to retain ownership over those recordings. So Frank Ocean is finally out of his contract and ready to start recording again, right? Wrong! One day later, Frank Ocean announces the biggest finesse the music industry has ever seen. He announces his Boys Don't Cry magazine will be coming to several pop-up shops all around the US and in London. The magazine is a very cool, if highly unusual piece of artwork, which is full of pictures of really sick cars, an unusual poem about McDonald's written by the one and only Kanye West, and to my great delight, an interview with Lil B, the bass god himself. Alongside this announcement, he releases the music video for his new single, Nikes, which is not on the Endless album, but is actually from his brand new album, Blonde, which he has released independently that day. Basically, Def Jam got absolutely finessed. They thought they were getting a banging Frank Ocean album, but what they actually got was a 45 minute Home Depot commercial that nobody wants to watch. Basically, the entire Endless album was just one giant pretentious arrow pointing to Frank Ocean's real album. So Endless was a decoy album, Frank finessed his way out of that deal, was able to keep the rights to the real album Blonde, drop it independently with Apple Music and secure that bag for himself. Now the album Blonde stormed the charts. It's rumored that in sales alone, the Blonde album netted about $2 million for Frank, whereas the Endless album netted a measly $157,000 for Def Jam. That's not even enough to buy a used Bentley truck. And that $2 million is just the tip of the iceberg. As it was mentioned at the start of this video, ASAP Rocky came out and said that Frank finessed Def Jam for $20 million. Now, I wasn't able to actually find any solid proof that Frank Ocean had indeed secured a $20 million bag. What I was able to find was that Apple are indeed rumored to have paid Drake $20 million and also that Chancellor Apple was offered $20 million that he actually had to turn down. After this, Lucian Grange, who is the head of Universal Music Group, which is the parent company of Def Jam, came out and said, no more. No more exclusives with streaming services and sources say that he was fuming. I've got to say, I'm genuinely blown away by the idea of promoting an album with a 140 hour stream of somebody building a staircase. When I release my hotly anticipated hip hop album, I'm actually going to upstage Frank by promoting it with a 150 hour video of Mina Lift. Beat that Frank. Still stuck in this lift. Still stuck in this lift. I'm trapped in a lift. Feel like R. Kelly but it's not a closet, it's a lift. There you have it. That is how Frank Ocean managed to finesse Def Jam and Apple Music out of $20 million. Madness. If you like that video, make sure that you like and subscribe below. Hit that notification bell so you can see every single time that I upload. And thanks so much for watching. Also, in honor of Frank Ocean's back-to-back -back album dropping finesse, I decided to do a little back-to-back -back video drop for you. So if you're interested, I just dropped a video on the Dictionary of UK Drill. If you're an American that wants to know a little bit more about the music scene in the UK, I definitely recommend you check that out and find out a little bit about what we've going on in the UK Drill scene. Hope you enjoy that and thank you very much. Peace out.